Hey guys. So this energy has been really, really intense for me. Um, this past like Friday night going into Saturday was a huge purge for me energetically. Um, this energy feels like, I don't know if you guys remember, but back towards the end of the summer of 2017, there was an eclipse and it was a very powerful eclipse. And my whole life had uprooted after this eclipse and I went through this huge purge and it honestly was like a big push in my journey. Not long after that is when I started making YouTube videos and I started to come on and um, sharing messages that I was receiving um, from my higher self. And um, just to give you an idea of how big these energies are during that time when I was feeling that is when I separated from my husband, got a divorce, moved from California, sold all my shit, moved from California, made a road trip across the country back to Virginia to this house I owned and was renting out there, moved into that, which was trashed by the people who were <laughs> renting it at the time, had to deal with all that, moved my four kids, my animals, and just sold everything and left. It was like, this is, I ripped off that band-aid. Like, that's what was going on. Um, during that time in 2017 when those eclipses were happening. That is a similar energy to what I'm feeling right now. If that gives you any idea of how um, big unexpected changes, things coming out of nowhere, um, you just saying, ripping a Band-Aid off and saying, okay, I got to do this, right? Having these huge epiphanies where you're just so, you're in that space where it's just like, um you feel that self because it's not coming from anywhere else it's coming from within you this urge to do something about something but in the same respect i was getting these downloads this morning so it might not look for everybody as material or as like physical in terms of action as 2017 but it might because eclipses there they reveal what has been in the dark okay so if there if if what has been in the dark for you does require that action then that might come from you but like think about it on mass scale um us being having things revealed to us in the world that have been happening behind the scenes that doesn't really affect us in in terms of what we need to do physically right so the, this can look a lot of different ways is the point I'm trying to make, okay? And so I had a whole list of downloads in my phone that I've been writing throughout the week because I've been doing lives. Well, I can't give my energy to that right now. I literally, if I feel called to do a video or live, I do it. If I don't, I don't. It is what it is. There is no promising anything. There is no planning. And that's all part of raising your frequency. You're in, you're so present that you feel uncomfortable to even plan something, to even say, this is what I'm gonna do because the energy is shifting so quickly. You don't even know where you're gonna be tomorrow. It's, it might, it's not gonna be the same place you were today. So you have to just flow with what the energy and stop trying to control it. The more you try to control it, the more uncomfortable you're gonna be. And I'm starting, I'm realizing that, I've always kind of realized that throughout the journey, but you get smacked with that lesson more. <laughs> Always, if you come out of that space of realizing, oh, you're, uh, you're not being present, you're going to realize it because you're going to have to deal with whatever comes up from not being present because you're worried about what happened in the past or anxious about the future or hoping something was different instead of being here right now. So I'm going to read these downloads. They came in this morning. Everything that I was going to share, I'm now not sharing because I got something that is more important that Spirit wanted to have come through. And that's what I'm going to touch on right now. Okay? And I will get back to lives when I get back to lives. It is what it is. We all need to get comfortable with that energy of not feeling guilt or shame or whatever from like an empty promise. Stop promising people things. All you can promise is this moment right now. Okay? So don't feel bad about that. <laughs> don't feel bad about just being true to who to who you are and how you feel and um avoid making plans to avoid the whole confrontation of it all with people especially people who don't understand energy who don't understand ascension 
and who are outside still, you know, asleep to a lot of the truth of how this world actually works. All right. So this was interesting. <laughs> this was so interesting to me. So I'm just going to start reading and then I'm going to go off the cuff like I normally do. But really pay attention to how this applies in your life because this applies to every last one of us. And I was just getting beat over the head with epiphanies and realizations of how I'm holding myself down. And at the end of the day, if you feel like you're a victim or being held down, it's you doing it to you. <laughs> it's hard to see it when you're in that darkness, when you're in that space and when you're in those frequencies that don't feel very good, it's hard to see it, but it is. Once you come out of it, that's when you're like, oh shit, that's what that was, right? And that's kind of um, how it was for me after this weekend. It took me like a day to recover and then it was like whoosh, downloads, whoosh, epiphanies of what it actually means for me and how it applies to the collective because I'm very deeply connected to the collective. Obviously, most people who have a voice box in the spiritual community are connected to the collective energy because they're here to help people ascend, to help them um, maybe come into those epiphanies. At the end of the day, I can't do it for anybody, but sometimes little things can trigger that, right? And so when we come out and we share our experiences or we share what our epiphanies are, then they become realized in others, especially if you're already on this journey, especially if you have an open heart and you're willing to change, you're willing to do life a little differently. You're willing to look at something from a different perspective. So <clears throat> here we go. Anytime you embody the role of a victim, you choose suffering. You allow something outside of you to dictate how you feel. Sometimes, no matter how well intended, those who support us are actually enabling our suffering. Whoo, these were some serious times for me this morning. Think, when we give someone advice or the answers, they still end up doing what they wanna do because that desire has to come from, with, from them. If they haven't had the epiphany or realization come from within, then the lesson hasn't been learned, which means they do need to repeat the mistake for another opportunity to see that epiphany where they need to grow at. So a lot of times it's just like um, when we, like, like you said, when you give somebody advice, and, you, and you're giving them, you feel like you're giving them all the answers to the test and they still fail a test because they go out and do what they want to do, right? Which is like the opposite of what your advice is. Like this used to happen with my girlfriends back when I had friends. Now I'm very isolated, but I know I'm isolated for a reason. That's aside from the point. But I would give them advice and then they would go do the complete opposite and get hurt again. And I'm like, what in the ham sandwich? Why aren't you listening to me? I just told you the answers to the test and you still put the wrong answers down. <laughs> like, why? And it's because that epiphany, that realization has to come from within inside of themselves. Otherwise, they didn't actually learn the lesson. It's like if you give somebody the answer to the test, but then they they have to go and take another test eventually. They didn't actually learn that content. They didn't actually learn that lesson in order to like be sufficient and proficient in, in whatever it is that they were there to learn. So what happens is people will continue to repeat the same mistake. Every single one of us does this. And a lot of times, the, when you continuously repeat the mistake, it's because you're in the space of being a victim. And for me, I've learned this lesson in terms of my, my childhood trauma. A lot of it was based in abandonment because I was in a situation as a child where my mom was a drug addict and alcoholic. So she neglected me and my brother. And so I had this trauma of abandonment. So then when I come into relationships, um, that will seep into my relationships, right? And it doesn't even matter, romantic, any type of relationship. And so what happens when I, when, um, somebody will, uh, have that abandonment issue come up, it, it puts you into victim mode. 
And then from a space of victim mode, you only perceive the situation from a certain frequency. Now, I don't have to tell you that victim mode is not a high frequency. It's, a, it's usually a trauma response from some type of trauma that you've um, had. And so you're not able to perceive the situation from a higher space. You're only able to perceive it from a place of some, something is happening to me. So because of that, that something outside of me is able to dictate how I feel. Therefore, I'm giving my power away to whatever that something might be. And a lot of times when we want the support so badly and the support comes in and validates our victimhood, it validates our victimhood and it keeps us in a lower space. And so then we can only continue to see ourselves from that space of being a victim. And even though those people who want to support us are well-intentioned, they unconsciously have intentions that are like, I just, I uh, want you to feel better. I care about you. I want you to feel better. So I want to give you the answers to the test. I want you to have these answers so you can just feel better. But it's not about having the answers to the test from somebody else. It's about being able to raise your frequency, feel good, feel, have your power without needing something outside of you to be a certain way without needing anything to be a certain way. And once you can master that in the present moment, no matter where you are, no matter what relationship you're in, no matter what job you're in, no matter what your issue is, until you can master that, you're gonna keep repeating that cycle. And that is of the highest good because until you learn till you learn to release that and, and generate that love, that unconditional love and acceptance and power within yourself, you will constantly seek it outside of yourself. You'll constantly find something to blame for the way you feel or for where you are or the list goes on. Okay. All right. So next, this is me. This is just kind of shifting a little bit, but still similar. Just through observing myself and other people over time. I've noticed this and this kind of came in a little bit yesterday, but then spirit kind of uh, added on to what um, needs to be heard. Okay. So people are very aware and quick to call someone out who is doing wrong. Yet when they commit a wrong, often they are unconscious of it or don't see it as being bad. I'm like, why is that? Why is it that somebody can have something done to them? And, and they are just up in arms about it. That's victimhood, by the way. But, but then, because they feel justified because someone did something to them, they can go back and do that same thing. But they literally, unconsciously, don't feel wrong about it. They do not feel wrong about it. They feel justified because this person did this or this happened to me, so I can do this, right? It's this weird thing. It's this weird unconscious thing. Even this morning, my daughter was upset because my son had his birthday yesterday and he got these little Rubik's cubes and like these little puzzle things and he got a bunch of them and they're different ones. And, he, and she was like, Miles, can I play with one of those? And he's like, no. And, I, and she was upset. She came and told me, she's like, Miles won't share. You know, I was like, he doesn't have to share with you if he doesn't want to. She's like, well, I'm not going to share with him next time I get a new toy. And I said, is you doing the same thing to him? Does that feel like the right thing to do? Because if somebody, it's like two wrongs don't make a right, you know, but that's no different. It's like somebody does something and you're like judging them. Like that's a wrong thing to do. Even if it wasn't to you, that's a wrong thing to do. Yet that person can be in a situation do something, it doesn't even have to be the same thing, that's quote unquote wrong, not of integrity, and they can feel like it's okay though. It's like a person that's married and they got cheated on a million times and they've been getting hit by it for years and years and they're still in that marriage and they never cheated, but now somebody's approached them and they have that opportunity and they take it and they feel justified in it because they've been doing, they've been done wrong for so long, right? And they feel like, why should I feel bad about this? They've been doing this to me forever. And so they do it and it's okay to them. It's okay, you know? And, and really, 
it's still a lack of integrity. It doesn't matter what that person did to you. It's where are you coming from integrity? Is there another way to perceive this and to handle the situation? Or are you just too afraid to move out of it? So you're finding other ways to fulfill yourself externally in order to fill that void that you should be filling yourself. We could go all different. Ex I could go examples for days, but you feel what I'm saying. So back to spirit almost. Okay. Yet when they commit the wrong, often they are unconscious of it or don't see it as being bad. Almost as if there is a justification within themselves as to why is it okay. The irony of this is that they understand the wrongdoing if it's not them doing it. But when it's them doing it, it's unconscious. And I don't think it's intentional. I really do think this is something that's an unconscious, unhealed wound. And the point of, I feel like the point that Spirit's trying to bring up here is that there's always more layers to peel back because if you notice every time you have those aha moments, those epiphanies, those things that you're like, oh shit, I was doing that and I didn't even realize I was doing that. There's more layers to peel back. There's always another layer to peel back. There's always another perspective or angle to look at something from. And so um, for me with the whole abandonment thing, I'm isolated um, and when I go into these and I feel good about that, like that's, I was just sitting in the sun, like getting on my split ends with the scissors. You know, I don't go get my hair cut, but I'll go and sit in the sun and like cut all my split ends. And when I do that, it's kind of meditative and spirit was bringing me all these, all these downloads and stuff. And I was just sitting there like realizing how much I really do enjoy being alone. And I always have since I was um, young, my brother and my dad used to like, they're like, all you ever do is just sit by yourself in your room or go do this by yourself. And they used to, I've always been attacked for choosing that, but I understand why. But the irony in the complete weirdness of it all is that my issues are abandonment issues. So in order to really come into that space of feeling good about being alone, because sometimes you get into the space where you fall into a victim about being alone and you blame it on things outside of you. And sometimes, even when the things aren't that bad, you can create it and you can add momentum to why that person is, you know, uh, defying you in some way. That person is toxic to you in some way. But at the end of the day, it's you sinking into a victim frequency and then adding momentum and and um, excuses and reasons why you want to control what's outside of you in order to feel good about what's inside of you. And those aren't easy lessons when you're a light worker and you're here to help the collective because, <clears throat> because you're feeling the outside energy. You're feeling that energy. You're feeling when eclipses come up, you're feeling everybody's emotions come in. And so it's hard not to be like, that is me. And then all of a sudden that trauma comes right back. That shit you thought you cleared. It's coming right back up to ask you if you really let go of it. If you really are cool with that solitude and generating that love and security within yourself not reaching outside for another job, another relationship, a, a, another place to live, anything, not reaching for anything. And we can, when those, when the eclipse energies or any type of um, heavy plasma energy comes in and it asks us to look at ourselves again and it asks us to help transmute this energy for the collective, we have to be aware of these things. We have to be like, oh wait, I know what this is and it ain't going to get me this time. Although it did get me the other day, <laughs> but not for long. It wasn't even 24 hours, like 12 hours. Um, so yeah, that's what came through from spirit today. And it really, really made me sit here and take a good solid look at how easy it is to slip into those frequencies and how you have to be grounded and anchored into this space and understand what the hell we came here for. And it wasn't to have a bunch of material things. It wasn't to try to have some crazy romantic experience. It literally 
was to anchor in light and activate organic way of being into reality to change the whole fucking timeline. We came from the future. We don't need to know what it's like to have some crazy romantical experience. That will, that can and, and probably will happen organically, but our top priority is to come here and do what the hell we came here to do, which is anchor light. And a lot of times that has to be in solitude because we have to be able to hear ourselves. Otherwise, we get distracted. We get distracted by things outside of us that aren't even ready to meet us there. We get distracted by the matrix. We get distracted by so many things, our phones, everything. I just deleted my whole main Facebook and I only created one so I could, I created a brand new one. I hate how fishy Facebook is and they won't let you delete content in bulk. That is the most suspect shit ever. Anyways, so I just wanted it for marketplace and to connect with my community and the groups of my community because I do need it. I use it for that. I'm not saying I need it. I don't have to need it, but because of what I'm going to be doing and what I do in the space, I need it, right? So I created a whole new one, not trying to add a bunch of friends or anything like that. It's just literally for things that I need it for that have nothing to do with socializing, uh, except for community, I guess, but those are more like groups. So I know what's going on um, in my area, but we we're so distracted by these things. And it was like right after I had that big purge of emotion and victimhood and all that shit, I was like, I purged my whole fucking Facebook that I've had for like 15 years. My family's going to be pissed because they want to see pictures of my kids constantly. But you know what? I like I've been wanting to do it for so long. I want that privacy. I want that private life. It was funny, me and Lance were watching this movie and it was like from back in the 90s and it had like a beeper and shit, like, you know, the old technology. And I just looked at him, I was like, how much have we changed and how much of that change is really supporting the art, the AI timelines, the we're giving ourselves away to these distractions that are of the negative timeline. And the weird part about the internet, because I was like, but if the internet never came to be, how would we know what the hell's going on? How would we as light workers reach so many people? I might not even be as awake and aware as I am right now if it weren't for, you know, going down these rabbit holes, listening to people on YouTube, the information being at your fingertips, being able to go through all this information, discern the bullshit from the truth and all this kind of stuff. So there's this polarity, Is there's this positive and negative. There's this like, how can I use this for the highest good? And what is not serving me and sucking me into the fucking abyss of bullshit on the timeline that I don't even want to be on or support but I was born into and programmed into and that discernment is fucking everything right now it's everything that's why we have to come out of victim mode we have to come into our personal power and we have to know what the hell we came here for and stop being distracted by other people stop the, the more you're going to be more clear by yourself. You're going to be more clear in your own space. Do not forget that. Do not get into a relationship where it sucks your whole fucking day away in conversation. That doesn't, that it actually doesn't serve you. I remember when me and Lance first got together, you know, he's not the type of, he's not like a huge communicator. That's probably one of the issues that we've had. And I'm like a huge communicator. Why? Because I have these um, abandonment issues and it makes me feel safe and connected to somebody aka reaching externally to feel fulfilled to feel like I'm safe right because I can't figure out how to generate it within here and so what do I want to do you're a bad communicator you're not la 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 you're not this you're not that and I can just make my mental in that space your ego that's where you're at when you're in those lower frequencies can twist the narrative and you'll just it'll just continuously convince you why you're the victim why this person needs to change or be something different instead of accepting people for where they're at and understanding things on a deeper level and let and, and whenever we do that we aren't helping them learn their lesson either like by being our highest truest self how we help people is being our highest like just being the light 
you know, not uh, blaming them for the way that we feel and just observing. They can go, they can go dive into dumb shit. Go ahead, go dive into your dumb shit and I'm gonna pretend you don't exist and I'm being my own little high, high vibrational space where I'm not being a victim and I'm being fulfilled by myself and you can suffer on your own, right? That doesn't mean you have to participate in anything. We really have to be able to expand and see things from every perspective. Because if we don't, we'll constantly go back into victim mode, which is blame, which is the blame game, which is judging our experience, judging the other people's experiences. This is not some like it's simple but complex all at the same time. It's simple because just come from your heart, just expand your heart, come from love, right? It's simple in that way, but it's not simple in the way that we've been programmed. Because we don't even understand what that is. Because in this space, we haven't been able to really, truly anchor that in. And that's because in order to play the game, you have to come down and you actually have to be a part of the game. You have to be a part of the program to understand the program and under, in, in, in order to be able to beat the game. You have to play the game to beat the game. But... Say, you know, you're a light worker and you came from the future. You already fucking transmuted uh, a lot of your karma. And then you come in here and you forget everything because you have to be a part of the game. You have to feel what the program feels like, right? This shit is not a joke. Like, this is serious. And so you have to come in and forget and go through all that shit all over again in order to remember so you can anchor that light and actually do something to help this planet and help shift into this new earth timeline, which is start interact, getting quiet, getting in nature and interacting with the energies and the spirits, the earth spirits and nature spirits, the elementals, because they're going to be the ones to help anchor it in. And if you've already been in that space where you're connecting with those elemental beings, you know what I'm talking about. And they don't have a lot of patience with humans. <laughs> they do not have a lot of patience with humans because we live in such a toxic, corrupt, low vibrational way. So if you want, and honestly, that to me, when we are able to really get into nature, really start living from an organic way of being, then we're going to be able to really start connecting with those nature spirits and that you don't even know what love really is until you really start connecting with those organic frequencies. Because when I've had those little tastes, I'm literally brought to tears every time my heart is like exploding. And I'm like, oh, this is why we're here. This is why we're here. And I, I have to get into those spaces where when I, it's like, this past Friday going into Saturday and I'm like literally hyperventilating crying asking myself what the fuck did I even come here for because I feel so unsupported I feel so like I feel like I'm on the right track then I'm not that I feel like I'm on the right track and then pff, another dark night of the soul and it's so hard to remember those moments of connection and heart expansion in those moments but when you come out of them and you have those epiphanies and you have a deeper, more expanded awareness and understanding of why the hell we're here, then you're just even more momentum gets pushed in the direction of where we're supposed to be on this mission to anchor the light into the space. So I will be on again, um, again soon. I have a lot running a lot of energy running through me I have to be careful when I do lives because they're very draining because I'm like literally interacting with everyone's energy and as as low as chill as it may seem um it takes a different type of uh energy from me in order to do that when I just come on and and read my downloads and express myself a little bit it takes it takes a little bit but it's not near what it is to do a live um, but I still, um, feel called to do them. I feel, I still feel that call. I just have to respect where I am at in any given moment and not put that pressure on myself as a perfectionist, as a people, a recovering people pleaser to, um, 
do more than what my body is able to do in this moment because that integration of the energies is real and respect that for yourself. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Give yourself that space to rest and recuperate and um, recenter, really. Get your bare feet on the ground. Go out in nature and, and really respect um, your physical avatar that you're using right now in order to um, do the work that we need to do. All right, guys. So I'll talk to you again soon and have an amazing day.